I'm here in the quailery today. Um, you can hear the ducks in the background. Um, yesterday I introduced our four little, um, four week old ducklings to the main flock. So they're still a little bit unsure, still running away from people, but they've been widely accepted. Um, had a bit of a scare the, um, the last night when one of them actually fell down between the wall and the the gate, um, the fence, and uh, got trapped. Poor thing, actually, quite quite badly trapped. He's fine. She, he, she. It he keeps peeping as if it's sort of a bit worried that the ground's going to open up and swallow him again. He, she. It. It's the the white one, Bodger. Um, so thankfully, I found them. Um, last night when I was locking everyone up I had a look in and I just did a, a quick sort of how is everyone I thought oh where's Bodger and I, I did worry that maybe I mean they're, they're a bit big for a hawk to take or anything but we do have do have buzzards and, and red kites and stuff like that and though red kites are scavengers you never know they're very big birds so I had a look and thankfully when I when I went into the enclosure I heard it peeping, looked down and saw it sort of help, managed to get it out. It seems fine, no injuries, didn't even seem particularly shaken, so I, I don't know how long it had been in there, but that is just a little reminder to be very careful with ducklings. So they do tend to get into trouble, and um, particularly with the very young ones, it means that I'm not going to be able to put them in as early as I had hoped. So I'm in the quailery today, talking about ducks. Sipping my cloudy lemonade with a little spritz of um, uh, rum and raisin, non-alcoholic, not that it matters, it's bank holiday weekend. Um, <laughs> non-alcoholic rum and raisin. I'm in the quailery today because I think it's about time they had a clean out. Now the four ducklings, I needed to get them out of the house. So I put them in the quailery with the quail and the quail are quite quite welcoming, quite all right with, with newcomers. So I put them in here with the quail for a few days um, and then I've now moved them and that, that served two purposes. Firstly, to get them out of the house so I could actually clean the mess that they've made in my bathroom. Um, and secondly, it gives the adults an opportunity to be able to see them for a little while, for the two different groups to see each other for a little bit um, before they are then forced together to share the same space. So that worked quite well. Problem is, as ducks do, they splashed water everywhere and the quailery needed cleaning out and now it really needs cleaning out. So I'm in here now that it's had a little chance to dry up a bit to um, take out all of the old wood chip and put fresh wood chip in. I hadn't realised how much wood chip there is. So I've already filled eight and a half rubble sacks full of wood chip and I am probably about a third of the way if that <laughs> so I'm having a bit of a rest um, in a little while so my plans is, are to clean this out get it looking nice and then mum and babies because she's desperate to get out of there mum and babies are going to move in here um, so that I can clean that out because they've been in there for a week, no, nearly two weeks now because uh, the babies are nearly two weeks old and she's been in there of course beforehand as a broody which means I have not been able to clean the duck cage house thing out without really disturbing them so I've been avoiding doing that and I've just been putting fresh straw on top of old straw of course, the problem with that is the old straw is still there. And now that the weather's got warmer, that's a sparrow eating my blooming lettuces. Get off, little shit. 
I need to net those. It's my own stupid fault, I know. If I plant lettuces, the sparrows come and have them. At the moment, it's only one or two sparrows that have noticed it's there. But soon they'll tell all their little friends and I won't have any bloody lettuces left. <sighs> Nature is a wonderful thing. So, plan. Clean this out. Get all the old wood chip out. That's going to go down the allotment, put in the compost to let it rot down because it's going to be nice, rich stuff. It's going to have to be several trips. Uh, fresh wood chip down. Then, at some point, mum and babies are going to be moved into here. Um, then the ad and then I'm going to be able to clean the duck thing out so that the adults can now use it, hopefully tonight. Um, so that they've got somewhere safe to be overnight because at the moment they've just been penned in and I'm conscious of the fact that if Foxy Woxy wants to have a go there's very little between Foxy Woxy and Ducky Wucky. Um, so anyway, there's the plan. That's the plan for today. At some point I do want to go down the allotment. But uh, it's about 10 o'clock now, so we'll see how well that, that goes. I also want to empty out the pond because that, of course, is now starting to hum. Um, because I've moved the ducks, because the adult ducks have been basically restricted to the pond area, what I usually use to agitate the water to keep it a bit fresher, um, I've now had to use as the actual duck house. Um, so I haven't been able to agitate the water, I haven't been able to aerate the water, so now it's gone stagnant. Um, so what that means is I'm going to, I want to now empty the pond of all of the water as much as possible and fill it back up again. Now I had a delivery of a, I don't have an outdoor tap, so I've had a delivery of a, a lovely little attachment that attached to my kitchen sink, which means I can run a hose through from my kitchen sink to my pond to fill it up very nicely and that works perfectly but what doesn't work perfectly or didn't is the pond pump which had completely seized up and i could get it to work out of its housing eventually um, but couldn't get it to work in its housing and i had no idea why i now seem to have got it to work in its housing so can now empty the pond and then fill it back up again. So at some point we're going to have a mass shuffling of ducks, mum and babies in here, adults and newish babies into the cage, locked up, pond emptied, pond filled, everyone free again. So won't that be fun? Um, <laughs> on another bit of livestock news, have another sip of this, quite nice. Mm. <laughs> it's a very hot day compared to the rest of May, which has been miserable. <sighs> um, livestock news. The Blue Egg Project. Now, I bought, you may remember, 24 Celadon eggs. 24. Put them in the incubator. Now I usually have a wonderful hatch rate for quail, absolutely brilliant hatch rate for quail, even sent in the post. This time, not so much. So out of 24 eggs, how many do you think hatched? I'll give you a clue. I don't have to take my shoes and socks off to count them on my fingers and toes. I don't even have to put my drink down. Four, well actually five, five hatched. One died very quickly. It had a deformity of its feet and I didn't think it would really survive, but I believe in giving life a chance. So down to four. Two have now developed deformities. Now we're down to two. Although they're, they're still alive and they're still coping. And as I say, I'll give life a chance. I won't breed from them, but as long as they're, they're happy and active and doing what they need to do, I'm gonna give them a chance. And we will just have to see what happens. 
Um, but they've got deformities on their legs as well, which leads me to think that, as I postulated earlier, they were a bit inbred, um, which is sad. So I've got two. I've got a white one and I've got a tuxedo. So they are now at the four week old mark. They are really small and really scraggly for four weeks. They are not good, not good stock. They're moving around and they're, they're, they're growing feathers and whatever, but they're really scraggly. I mean, when I look at all of the quail that I've hatched before at four weeks are maybe half adult size, fully feathered apart from maybe a bit round their heads. I mean, these guys, but the weather's nice and warm, so I'm gonna bring them out. I'm going to let them loose in the quailery and we will see what happens. Um, I don't hold out much hope, but I, I, am, I am hoping that at least one of them is a male so that I can then breed it to my, hello. Come here. Ooh. It's me trying to do it one-handed. No, she doesn't want to say hello. Um, <laughs> she just came to volunteer to be on camera. Um, I was hoping that I would then be able to breed them to my bluish egg-laying females and see what happens. Knowing my luck, they'll probably all be female, which will be mildly annoying, but there we go. Um, but then, of course, what I can do is I could breed in um, some of my males and then you know still still keep it going I do want to hatch out some more quail because um, I had someone come and collect some adults today uh, for their own little quailery so I'm down seven adults which means there's room for more uh, but that that will be something once the adult theme once the the duck and the ducklings are out and in with the rest of the the um, flock and that number needs to go down at some point as well but there we go hello beautiful you're so pretty yes you are um yeah so these guys are helping me helping me dig up the wood chip working through it for worms there's so lots of worms which means i do have to be careful with the shovel because otherwise i'll end up with a, a quail on the end of it because they don't move out the way they will not move out of the way. But I kind of like that they're tame. They help me. They keep me company. So I'm going to have another sip of my lovely drink and crack on with it. Look at this. How am I meant to dig with all of these? Hmm? Look at you. You know, you can turn this at any point yourself and find all the food. You wait for me to do it. Hmm? Mm, I see you. Before. During. After. So it's worth doing every now and again. You can see how I've just put fresh wood chip on top of old wood chip and it's now really rotted down. So I've put off doing this job, but now it really does need doing. And you can see the construction. These um, patio slabs, they're just on top of um, tamped down compacted earth uh, and they're, they're not cemented together or anything. So there's a little bit of drainage um, between the the blocks and it does make bringing the wood chip up really easy because it's just a case of scraping and shoveling and uh, that was a very very good idea though I say so myself and I think the quail approve of a nice fresh wood chip that they can now dig through and look for bugs not that I think there are many but it'll give them something to do. 
rather than bothering me by trying to dust bathe in the dry stuff that I'm kicking up and eat worms out of the wet stuff I'm kicking up. I love them really. And we're finally finished. I'm exhausted. I'm really tired. This has taken me, I started at half past eight. It is now half past twelve. So that is the, I don't know if you can see those. Those are the bags of wood chip that I have removed. I, I can't be bothered to count them. There's, I don't know, like 20 of them. And I've replaced them with six bags, just six bags of wood chip. And that actually, it could have only been done with five. So it's a bit thicker in places than I might like, but that's fine. It's quite, you know, it's quite thick there. The thing is, is like, I don't want to be replacing it too often. I just want to be able to sprinkle new wood chip on top and then, you know, maybe once every year or so, I do what I've done today and go through it, turf it all out and have done. I think I'm going to have breakfast, it being half twelve. I've given them this, they've got this, um, this thing that I use as a seat, this uh, lovely um, tree stump and the bark came off it. So look, oh, it's just gone inside. So what I've done is I've tend to sort of put it here, give them some privacy, but actually I thought I'd put it along there and it's got a little hole in it. So just might give them a little bit of privacy, make them feel nice and comfy and comfy cozy in there. We've got some people having a little sleepy pie. We've got some people in there having a little sleepy pie. So yeah, and uh, where they are nice and cosy is most likely where they're going to lay their eggs. Um, so that actually makes egg collection easier. You'll find they tend to lay eggs. I mean, they will just wander along and just drop them anywhere, but uh, they tend to lay them in corners or nice quiet little places. So uh, hopefully that'll make egg collection a little bit easier. And these guys have been watching me, curious as to what I'm doing. There's the pump that I need to put back in the pond and empty the pond. But I think I'm going to empty the pond tomorrow because that is a big job and I just can't face it today. I know, breakfast, definitely.